The Battle of San Fontaine was fought between the Union of South Africa on behalf of the British Imperial Government, and the German Empire on 26 September 1914 at San Fontaine, during the first stage of the South West Africa campaign of World War I, and ended in a German victory. Chapter 1 – Background The outbreak of World War I led to the transfer of the British Imperial garrison from South Africa to France. Expecting the war to finish quickly, many South Africans also departed for Europe, aiming to take part in the combat. The Union Defence Force took the responsibility of independently protecting South Africa from a possible German offensive. In the meantime, Prime Minister Louis Botha found himself in the middle of a confrontation between British loyalists supporting full involvement in the war and Afrikaner nationalists advocating neutrality. German colonial troops in South West Africa numbered 140 officers, 2,000 regulars, and 2,500 reservists organized into eight mounted companies, a single camel corp, four field batteries, and an air wing. 1,500 policemen and 200 Boer rebels could also be potentially mobilized. The majority of the army consisted of non-Askaris, being resented by the Aboriginal population due to their conduct during the Herero Wars. Despite their unpopularity, the German Schutztrupp was well organized and disciplined. The UDF had the ability to mobilize as many as 100,000 troops, yet it had a heterogeneous structure and lacked experienced staff officers. A large portion of the South African German borderline consisted of a ragged open desert characterized by the absence of water. The difficult terrain enabled the German army to create a defensive frontier along the line of Winduk and Katemanshuop, and troops were also stationed adjacent to the two regional railroads. Having a limited number of troops in his possession, the German commander, Joachim von Heidebreck, ordered his troops to assume defensive positions and observe predefined routes. The area of San Fontaine held high strategic importance due to the presence of the only high-quality water wells in a 75-kilometer radius, thus being a crucial supply point for any large-scale operation. The South African military was well aware of the complicated geographic conditions, possessing a variety of pre-war journals and reports concerning German Southwest Africa's topology. On 7 August 1914, Britain requested Botha to capture the German communication stations of Windhoek, Swarkabund, and Luderitzbucht. On 10 August, following intense negotiations, the Botha government reluctantly agreed to create a volunteer expeditionary force only after the Parliament's approval. Mobilization and troop maneuvers ensued even before the Parliament's decision, as the government enforced censorship on the press to suppress the spread of rumors. On 21 August 1914, the expeditionary force took its final form. A column consisting of 1,200 soldiers and six artillery pieces known as Force C was to strike Luderitzbucht. A column consisting of 1,800 soldiers and eight guns known as Forsa would land at Port Nolloth, in support of Force C. Finally, the 1,000-man Force B would invade from the eastern direction, attacking Uppington. The plans regarding the invasion were revealed during a 9 September Parliament session, gaining approval. On 14 September 1914, South Africa officially entered the war, however, the situation was soon complicated by the outbreak of the Merits Rebellion the following day. The revolt led to the resignation of several high-ranking commanders involved in the expeditionary force, who now rose in an open rebellion against their former colleagues and had to be hastily replaced. Chapter 2 – Battle On 12 September 1914, Force A under Brigadier General Tim Lukin arrived at the border post-axis of Raman's Drift, Aum's Drift, and Guddas. A week later, the 4th and 5th South Africa Mounted Riflemen regiments penetrated the border capturing Sandfontein. Forcer proceeded to disperse, occupying Steinkopf and Rahman's Drift, as German troops began concentrating on the eastern border. Sandfontein remained isolated and vulnerable to attack as the area was surrounded by hillocks and narrow sand ridges that could be used during an encirclement maneuver. The German command made full use of its superior intelligence, 
having previously detained a South African scout and holding the allegiance of the rebellious force B Commander Manny Merritt's. Sanfontaine's garrison of 120 men was hurriedly reinforced by two squadrons of mounted riflemen, two machine guns, an ambulance, and two 13-pounder artillery pieces on the early morning of 26 September. A force of 1,700 men, ten artillery batteries, and four machine guns gathered at Warmbad, encompassing Sanfontaine on the dawn of 26 September. The German column immediately launched a simultaneous attack from Aum's Drift and Warmbad, surprising the defenders. The defenders began engaging the German cavalry that emerged from the northeast when another body of troops suddenly appeared from the southwestern direction. At approximately 8 o'clock, fighting intensified with the beginning of an artillery duel. Enjoying numerical superiority, the German troops struck the unprotected flank and rear of the British, who had lost the capacity of breaking through the encirclement. A British machine gun section foiled an infantry rush from the northeast, which intended to capture the battlefield's tallest hillock. At the same time, a German machine gunner approached from the south, killing a large pack of horses and scattering the remains, later destroying an enemy machine gun position. At 8.30, a second German battery made its appearance, suppressing the British artillery and slaughtering the second pack of horses stationed nearby. At 10.00, German infantry attempted a second charge from the eastern direction, retreating after suffering heavy casualties. At 11.00, transferred their artillery and machine guns to the southwest, concealing them in the stony outcrops. An hour later, the distance separating the two combatants numbered approximately 550 meters. Around the same time, British Commander Colonel R.C. Grant was wounded by machine gun fire and was substituted by Captain E.J. Welby before again assuming command. Between 13.00 to 14.00, the main body of German troops ceased hostilities to have a meal while bombarding the exhausted British troops the majority of whom spent the previous night marching. By 17.00, German troops halved the distance separating them from the British positions, employing high explosive shells. At around 18.00, the British troops raised the white flag. German casualties amounted to 14 dead and 46 wounded, while the South Africans lost 16 men dead and 51 wounded.